well born and bred, Robert Curzon was a nobleman who had studied classics at Oxford, but left in 1831 without completing his degree. In many ways, he was very typical of his age, young aristocrat, bored, uh, couldn't find a, a role for himself. His family had no sense of what he should do. And so he, he was clearly seeking some sort of purpose in his life. Disenchanted by the perpetual gloom of England, Curzon wrote, the solitariness of my existence is unendurable. It's like living in a madhouse. So he packed his bags and set off for an exotic land to resurrect his broken spirit. Curzon's escape from the madhouse led him to Egypt and the majestic pyramids. You can't not be amazed standing in the presence of these giant stone monsters. But Curzon wanted to do more than just marvel at the wonders of ancient Egypt. A book collector with a passion for handwritten manuscripts, he wanted to find ancient biblical texts and bring them back to England for preservation. Egypt's early Christian monasteries were a natural target for his search. Egypt was a key player in the formation of early Christianity, and it's here that the monastic movement began. Monks who had gone out to the desert to live in solitude banded together in self-sufficient communities, and those became the first monasteries. One of the oldest monasteries in Egypt, and the world, is the Syrian monastery, 90 miles west of Cairo. In 1834, it took Lord Curzon nearly two days to reach it by boat and camel. Today, it's less than two hours away by bike. Founded in the sixth century AD, the monastery was known for its wall paintings and its library of precious manuscripts. When Curzon visited the library, he found the place in complete disarray with manuscripts just littering the floor. In his own words, he saw himself as a kind of biblical knight errant, there to save the texts from the thraldom of ignorant monks kept in their dark monastic dungeons. No question Curzon's heroic self-portrayal is a little over the top, but today's librarian of the monastery, Father Begul, admits the place probably was a mess. At that time, the monastery was in a poor condition, very, very poor condition. Not only the monastery, but the whole Egypt. Nobody had enough money for food. So uh, a very poor condition books were put in the burner because they haven't enough uh, wood. During his stay, the crafty Curzon plied a blind monk with liqueur to coax him into showing him the library in the deep recesses of the vaults. Taking the candle from the hand of one of the brethren, I discovered a narrow low door and entered into a small closet with the loose leaves of ancient manuscripts. Inside the room, Curzon found a treasure trove the dusty pages of some of the earliest dated Bible texts in existence, fully bound Christian manuscripts, as well as several gospel fragments, written in ancient Syriac, a language related to what Jesus spoke. They dated back to the fourth century AD. Curzon also stumbled upon a surprise. A biblical text, the Acts of Peter and Paul, which was never included in the Bible. At the time, questions about why this Christian text was omitted led to speculation among scholars about the accuracy of the Bible. Were there more texts not included in the scriptures waiting to be discovered? Word of Lord Curzon's discoveries in an obscure monastery in Egypt spread across Europe, alerting scholars and bibliophiles of the ancient treasures found in North Africa. 